This is my son. He starts school this year and I want to make him his first school bag. Lucky for me, he thinks I'm the coolest person in the world and he thinks this is a great idea. We went thrifting and found this blue duffel and orange rain jacket and he demanded an iron brew bag. Iron brew is my favourite drink. I think he's trying to please me, but I really don't know why this is what he wants. We also have this hand-me-down Marvel bag that has a lot of the key materials I'll need to make this whole thing work. I did a rough plan before starting. There will be a main body, a front pouch, and two drinks holders on the side, as well as the straps and loop. I started, as always, by unpicking the bag, and from this got black canvas, multiple panels of blue ripstop, the Marvel print canvas in various conditions, two panels of netting with elastic trim, straps, nylon webbing and clips, lots of binding tape, four zips, a velcro strap thing, this thing, some foam and that thing. I started by making the main back panel. Taking the foam from the Marvel bag, I trimmed it to a size that would fit my kid and cut the largest canvas panels to fit. From making the CBD bag, I learned that I needed to stabilize the raw edges properly, otherwise the whole thing would rip apart very quickly. So, every panel got hemmed before being seamed. With both panels cut to size and hemmed, they were sandwiched around the foam and sewn together, leaving an excessive seam allowance. Next, I tackled the front pouch. Selecting one of my zips, I checked what sort of shapes I could make. First, I made a flap to cover the zip track. I'm not using a pattern to make this. The depth of the pouch will be defined by the width of the zip. I sewed a panel right sides together to the zip, then folded it back to cover the full width, top stitched it down, then trimmed it to the width of the zip. The end panel of the duffel had a zip built in and was a little smaller than the back so I decided to use this for the face of the front pouch. I sewed the two face panels right side together and flipped it out. I then sewed on another panel to the zip, flipped it just below the track and trimmed it to the width of the zip. With the zip prepared, I needed to seal the ends to make a ring that would make up the sides of the front pouch. I cut and hemmed a panel, the width of the zip assembly, and sewed them right sides together at the ends then flipped this over and top stitched it down. This was repeated on the other side to make the ring. This was then pinned around the edge of the face panel and after a couple of attempts, I got this attached evenly. I didn't measure the length of the ring properly, so threw in these last minute pleats to make it fit. Finally, I added binding tape to the raw edge and this part is complete. For the body, I ripped both sleeves from the jacket trimmed them to the size of the back panel, then sewed them together to add some extra strength to this part of the bag. I selected another zip and repeated the same process as earlier to make the zip assembly, made the flap, then added panels to each side. This allowed me to make the sides of the body wider than the zip track. I added these two panels to the end to extend the length, then attached this construction to the front panel of the body. At the sewing machine, I remembered to sandwich in the netting for the bottle pouches. Finally, I sewed the netting along the other two edges, making the pouches. The body needs a base. I ripped the base from the Marvel bag to get this piece of foam. Again, I trimmed this to size to fit the body and made an internal panel with the blue ripstop. Then just basted this all together with some of the black canvas and trimmed it all to size once it was sewn. The base and body were sewn together and after some further trimming, I added binding to the raw edges here too. Lastly, I made the straps, again trimming the foam from the Marvel bag to size. I made panels with the ripstop but these disintegrated when I turned them out. I started again with the orange. I roughly cut out two panels, sandwiched them wrong sides together and traced the shape of the foam. Straight stitched along the chalk line then trimmed to size and added a zigzag stitch to stabilize the raw edge. Turning these out and inserting the foam worked out great. 
I added a zigzag to seal in the foam, ran a straight stitch down the center to secure the foam in place, and added the slide adjusters. The last thing to make was the other end of the straps. I made this little sausage of fabric the same size as the webbing, trimmed it square and cut it in half. These were slid over the webbing, stitched in place, then flipped out. I now have all the bits, the back, body, front pouch, straps and loop. It's time for the final assembly. I attached the pouch to the body, then stitched on all the straps to the back panel, before finally jamming it through the sewing machine and this is the finished garment. What have I done? It's lumpy and saggy and squinty and I'm going to get my kid killed. Some P7 is going to ask, what is that? And he'll proudly say, my daddy made it. And it'll get him a kicking. There is a reason that patterns are used. It's not optional. You need to do the maths and figure out all the sizes and shapes before you start. You can't just wing it and think it'll work out for the best. Every slight irregularity will have huge knock-on effects and leave you with this. I could run through the falls, but what's the point? They are clear to see. The problem is, I actually think this is pretty strong. Most of the raw edges are really secure, the stitching is pretty solid. I don't think this will just fall apart. But I have a few weeks of stress testing before the start of term. With any luck, I can kill it before then.